Hi everybody, Charles with GMAT Ninja here with your GMAT Club Quant question of the day. If you've never tried this question before, please hit the pause button, take a moment, give this one a shot, and we'll be here whenever you're ready. Okay, this question is really, really, really tough. Gets the highest uh, difficulty rating on GMAT Club. A um, lot of moving parts here, a whole bunch of different ways you could solve it. You could do a whole bunch of algebra. I'm actually going to skip that here because it's really, really, really cumbersome, and I don't think it's going to help anybody to see that. So I'm going to cut straight to the easiest way to do it, which is still kind of complicated and still takes a little bit of deciphering the language. Um, so running through this question this month, we've got 220 sold at the usual price, and the revenue would be 10% greater than last month. And if the revenue had gone up by 5%, then 200 tickets would be sold. And now we need a percent difference between last month and now this month's revenue at that 5% increase. Whole lot of moving parts here. Now notice you've got a problem solving question with a bunch of percents in it. I'm not always a big fan of picking numbers. There, in all honesty, aren't that many questions on the GMAT where picking numbers really makes your life easier, much more easy than say doing algebra. This is one of those cases where picking numbers is quite a bit easier. Let's start breaking this down, revenue, Thank you, Captain Obvious, price times quantity. So in this case, let's just pick a price. Let's say that the price is $20. Why $20? Well, it seems to make sense with the 5% and the 10% here. We'll get nice even numbers. So that means that the new price would be $21. So, so far, so good. We're picking numbers that aren't going to cause too much pain for us. OK, so this month, if 220 had been sold at that usual price, our total revenue would have been 220 times 20. And that would have been 10% greater than last month's revenue. So 1.1 times last month's revenue, what was last month's revenue? Would have been that $20 again times whatever the quantity was last month. So this is great. This allows us to solve for the quantity last month. Cool. Easy enough to shake and bake there. The 20s are just going to cancel out. 220 divided by 1.1. Numbers work out really, really nicely. So your quantity from last month is just going to be 200. Great. So now we can say that if we raise the price by 5%, so now we're in that world of this new price of $21. So your new revenue this month for this last part of the question, new revenue this month going to be $21 times 200 tickets sold. And there's your new revenue. And now all we need to know is what was the percent change? It went from last month to this month under this scenario. And now it's not all that bad. So question specifically is last month's revenue would be what percent less than this month's revenue? So a little, little trick here that helps. Notice I rearranged the question just a little bit so it has a then in it. If you struggle with these percent change problems, an easy thing you can do, make sure you've got something that's logically equivalent there. Uh, last month's revenue would be what percent less than this month's revenue? Now this month's revenue is gonna be your baseline percent change formula, often presented as new minus old over old. 
that can get confusing because then you're worried about timelines. I prefer to write it as new minus baseline over baseline. Why this month's revenue is the baseline and that's the newer thing, confusing. But if you're thinking of it as baseline and your baseline is whatever follows the word then, now it's pretty much foolproof. So this month's revenue, I'm gonna put in that denominator 21 times 200, 21 times 200 here. And obviously we're gonna multiply this times 100 to get the percentage. And you're new in this case, so this month's revenue, I'm sorry, last month's revenue, uh, that's just what we had here before, 200 times that $20. So notice that all those 200s are just gonna cancel out. This actually turns into something really, really clean and really, really easy. We just get one over 21 times that 100%. And our answer is just gonna be 100 over 21. And there's your answer and that's it. If you wanna see some algebraic solutions, come visit us on the forum, go ahead and Google the question. You'll find us on gmatclub.com. Again, I'm Charles at GMAT Ninja. Thank you for watching.